All right, good afternoon. Here we are back, still with Perry Nice. Still the th third stage of the race. Still sort of considered flat stages, although we're starting to paint. This painting is somebody going over. Sorry, I didn't quite hold the name of this rider riding for total energy. <clears throat> but anyway, but he's about to go over the top of a King of the Mountains point area although it's just a Cat 3 climb, which is a relatively, relatively easy climb. The categories are one through four, and then the biggest mountains are called Haute category or outside of category. So, as this rider is about to go over the climb, He's reaching to zip up his jersey again because it can get quite cold on the descents. It's like I'm not much of a climber when I ride, but the reward for making it up a hill is to get those incredibly fast downhills. Now these riders have the extra advantage, of course, of knowing that there's going to be no oncoming traffic, so they can hit a lot higher speeds because they don't have to worry about cutting the blind corner and suddenly finding a truck coming the other way. So I can't quite hit the kind of speeds they can. So just now doing the ink part of this, and I sort of, you can't see the image. So I'm watching the race as close to live as possible, although the streaming services you can't pause live streaming, so I do have to wait for a delayed broadcast, which is a little annoying that I can't do it in real time. But each of the climbs are marked with the sponsor of the mount of the climbers' jerseys and the polka dots. I did just learn, and I had never known this before, the reason that it's a polka dot jersey was the original sponsor of that jersey of the King of the Mountains climbing was a candy company. And um, their wrappers were polka dot wrappers, white with red dots. And so that's where the polka dot jersey came from. That's according to Bob Roll during the NBC Peacock um, broadcast. Now, I believe E. Le Lecker is a grocery store, so, you know, somewhat still related. And just behind those, so this rider has gone off the front near the top of the climb but hasn't gotten much advantage on the Peloton. That's what I'm just starting to paint right here. The Peloton is the, um, it only means the group and it's just the, the main group of racers. So frequently you'll have a breakaway. The breakaway can be, as in the case of up until just recently, coming up this climb, the early break was caught and I had done This painting right here is the early breakaway. So they were caught with just, uh, this is 25 kilometers to go. Oops, I need to make that bigger. I got way out of scale there. <laughs> now that's the thing like with watercolors and of course, I'm also drawing this with a, this is a fine point Sharpie. And I like using the Sharpie rather than a traditional ink because if I were to use traditional ink, I would have a waiting for the ink to dry problem. Because as soon as you try to run um, ink, watercolor, if that ink isn't dry and you run a wet watercolor brush across it, 
you are going to have a big black ooey gooey terrible mess so this guy that I had started to draw on the wrong scale is one of the workers that sets these things up and of course as soon as the broom wagon the last vehicle in the caravan sort of who, who demarks the end of the race the very last rider is just ahead of the broom wagon broom wagon gets its name from of course sweeping up the riders at the end of the race and if you get behind a certain distance a certain allowable time to be trailing the race the broom wagon will literally sweep well not literally figuratively sweep you up put you in the van and that's it your day is done so that's the general layout of the piece and you can see how i try to leave um a little gap you know try to get that relationship between the uh, riders I like to title it and sign it before I do the watercolor. Simple reason is that it's just as wet ink would be bad for watercolor. Uh, wet watercolor is bad for uh, Sharpie pens. So, um, picking up the brush now, of course the water is just off camera, but putting a little water on the brush I'm going to go to the yellows first and again using getting the yellow first of course the yellow is one of the harder colors um, or one of the easiest colors to make mud of so I like to get it down first less likelihood of getting a polluted color now I'm going to go straight whoops yeah, that was the right one. Pick up some orange. And then we go on to flesh tones. And so by working warm to cool colors, the cool colors are gonna to tend to um, run the risk of polluting muddying that um, so one of the biggest ways to keep your colors pure is the work the way I'm working from uh, warm to cool so that you don't um, accidentally while you're working with your light your paler your warmer colors drag it through a dark color and then you end up with this muddy mess of course, I'm realizing this orange safety vest I didn't put in. So, looking at this, and of course you watched me do it wrong, I was able to hide the inappropriately scaled figure. So, looking at this now, you may not really know what that is, why it looks the way it does, but because you saw this piece being created, you saw me fixing the mistake. And of course, with cycling, or excuse me, well, with cycling too, there are plenty of mistakes. Um, could even be argued that this guy's in the middle of making one, trying to go off the front with a peloton behind him that has very different ideas about who's going to win the stage. Certainly no intention of letting this guy go off and do it on his own. So as I was saying, the uh, king of the mountains, so the, the leader in, the, in that competition wears a polka dot jersey it's a red polka dot jersey, like I said, that came about through a um, particular rapper. Candy sponsor the company, or sponsor of the uh, King of the Mountains competition. So 
So again, now I'm just going to work through the cooler colors. And of course, green would be the cool, brightest, warmest of the cool colors since it's mixed with yellow. See where I'm going with that? And then we'll work through the palace with this little bit of turquoise. So this team, Total Energies, their colors are kind of a rainbow color and his under jersey is the whole spectrum. I'm sorry I didn't catch this rider's name before I started the piece. I keep a notebook beside me with everybody's name and bib number. You know, their racing number that's pinned to the back of their jerseys. But obviously from this point of view, it's a little hard to see the back of his jersey. So I don't know who he is just yet. But because of his kit, his jersey, his uniform, I know who he rides for. So now I'm moving on to the blues. Actually, I think I'll make that a darker blue. It's got more of a blue jean thing going on. So see, I got too much pigment down there, got too dark. So a little water, but not too much. And I can just pull that out and see how I lightened it. But now some of these other areas is a little too light. I'll use that as well. Because you can also use like for a little bit of, sh you know, shadow. Shadows are not black. Do remember that. Shadows are actually have a much more blue tone. Think blue sky if you want to think of it. It's a way to remember it. And so if the brightness is sun, the shadow is blue, like the blue sky. So there's a lot of blue in your shat in one's shadows, or should be. So now I want to work with the trees, and of course the trees are, this is early spring, late winter in France, and of course here on the East Coast as well. Depending on where we are, you could still be uh, in the throes of winter, of course. So the trees haven't leafed out yet. That always makes it a little more challenging. Painting pairing these in the spring classics because yeah, normally I could just lay in this vague -ish area of greens. But so I've got this sort of grayish green here that I'm going to lay in first. But one of the things I notice, I don't know if you do, but I tend to see colors. Remember as a kid, I was told, that, you know, how do you see those colors there? You seem to be seeing colors that aren't there. And so when I look at trees budding out, or not necessarily budding out, but just about to leaf out, I see a lot of purples and burgundies and lavenders in that right at the end of the right before the tree goes in. So as I look at this, and then it gets, so now I'll come back in underneath of that with a little bit darker, darker created by a little more green and a little blue added into it. So you see how this starts to look like trees that haven't quite put out their leaves yet. But some are just starting to go. So now I'm going to come back in here 
See when they start to go, of course, they're very bright initially. So that's, again, one of the reasons I like the painting this particular race is the landscape. Now, obviously, I've focused on the cyclists, on the event itself, but, you know, setting the stage is in the middle. It is in some event, some place, some time. So trying to give some of that reference, the landscape that goes with the bike racing. So what I was just mixing there was my black. Again, I've said it on other videos, but maybe just for reification, never use, you know, ivory or lamp black or whatever. It's just too dead of a color. It doesn't have any life to it. So I'm creating my black with a purple and this deep green that is, um, that I've mixed into some of these greens I've made. So it's a lot more of a color. It's a chroma. It's not just, um, cause that other black isn't alive. It'll eat a hole in your painting. figurative hole, not literal hole. So now to do these shadows again, I was talking about, so I have that black taking some of my ultramarine blue, so creating a blue black and coming back in here and getting the shadows under the riders. Back here first in the Peloton. There's not really a shadow for him. And then some of the trees putting their shadows across the roadway. And this just helps gives a sort of a counter move. So there's this direction going this way. And by laying in the shadows, I'm showing the other. And then of course there is, actually I don't think in this case there is a banner. Frequently there's a banner over the top of the road to mark the top of the climb. But there, now I'm now looking at first, there's actually just some tree shadow here. So I was about to paint something that wasn't there. Now using that same shadow color to do the rest of the road. So see how it's that much more diluted. And I'm picking up more water and just sort of following the contour of the hillside. So you see how the brush isn't just going straight up and down, but I'm actually coming around this curve. But the riders are coming around as they go over the mountain. This piece is just about done. Haven't done the, uh, so please be sure to give this a like. Thumbs up really helps me. Your following helps too. All of this sort of enables, the more you talk about or mark that you're looking at this, the more people um, will be able to find out about it as well. And then be sure to check out the blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com as well as my fine art website, craigleach.com. I'll put both of those in the, um, but there's the finished piece. Thanks for taking the time to look. Happy painting, happy bike riding. Hope you get to do a little of both.